and be my witness guys I'm not going to ask him a question I will ask him to tell me what the question he like to hear <coughs> hello do you hear me yes uh, Dr. Ruhi how are you I'm fine I'm fine thank you um, we, 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 we are thankful for the Lord that we have you back and today uh, we hope that uh, all of us Christians Muslims Buddhas Hindus atheists they will get the benefit of this meeting uh, I hope you have uh, your, I hope you did eat and you are good to go <laughs> yes alhamdulillah. all right you know my my, my friend uh, Ruhi some people they are asking me because we don't have your full name they said who is Sheikh Ruhi even one of them he said uh, 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 Sheikh Ruhi is not even a Muslim he is claiming that you are not a Muslim so what do you say to those Muslims who they are saying that you are not a Muslim what I am not a Muslim <laughs> well, one, one of them honest to God he, he called me it's recorded there you know you can check it out he called me and he said that you are like you you, you, I, you are hired by me you know I paid you money to come and you are acting as a as a Muslim, but you are not. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> you believe it? Oh, it is a big lot. Yeah. So you know it's what? What do you want to say to those who? Before we start, for those who they are saying you are not a Muslim. You, uh, 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 as I heard, you know uh, that's you have a PhD, right? Hello. Cut and voice. Yeah. I'm Hello, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was introducing to, to, to them. I told them that uh, Sheikh Ruhi he have a PhD, uh, in in uh, you know, uh, and he is a sheikh and he is a very well known person in Paltok. But if you like to introduce yourself before we start, go ahead, please. Cut and voice. I sheikh, do you hear me? Know. Do you like to introduce yes, yourself before? The... Yeah, sheikh, do you do you hear me? Do you hear yes. me? Okay. Yes, I hear you. Do you like to introduce yourself before we start? For those Muslims who would like to know you better. Yes. Well, go ahead, please. I am. Uh, I am a doctor from Azhar. Uh, I يعني, can tell you about myself. Maybe they want to know your uh, full name, I, if you don't mind. Uh, so, Dr. Rohi is a doctor from Al Azhar University. You just heard him saying that, confirming that. Uh, what is your field, Dr. Rohi? In, in uh, what, you graduate with what from Azhar University? In Sharia. In Sharia. So he is. In Sharia. He is a person it's who much. have a PhD in Sharia Allah. That's wonderful. All right. Do you like to say your full name, Dr. Rohi, or you don't want to mention? It's up to you. No, later. Uh, later, uh, my friend. No problem, Dr. Rohi. I'm not going to ask you any question. You are our guest. So I'm going to ask you, what do you like me to ask you? Give me the question you like me to ask you, and I will give it to you back. What I don't understand. What do you like me to ask you? I'm not going to ask you a, a question of my choice. What is your favorite question you like to be asked? Like something you can really explain very well because you mm. you know the, uh, uh, everything about it. First, uh, thank you a lot for it. Uh, Sheikh, let me call you back because the voice is cutting for some reason. Let me give you let me give you a call back. Hold on, maybe that will fix. Get, let me call you back in a second. All right, Sheikh. Yes, I will uh, restart. Okay. Uh, now. All right. Uh, because some uh, for somehow it's voice? cutting. Do you have many programs in the back, back uh, in the background of your computer? Maybe there's many uh, okay. because you are in Egypt. One 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 minute, my. One minute, my friend. No problem. Take your time. So, as you heard, guys, he confirmed that he is a PhD person from Al Azhar University. For those who do not know, the Azhar University is the highest university in the world to teach about Islam. Me myself, I did not get my degree from the Azhar University. Uh, I got it from different school. I have nothing to do with this university. Uh, however. My experience with people who graduate from Islamic University, you learn nothing. And today we are going to prove it. All right, let us call him back. He's, he's back on air. All right, Sheikh. Hello. Yeah, we hear you. Go ahead. 
Hello. Yes, I hear you, Sheikh. Hello. I hear you, my friend. How is the voice now? It is good. It is good. Go ahead. It's good. Oh, okay. Go ahead. We are listening. Oh, okay. First, thank you for a lot for your light. Uh, may Allah bless you. Truly, I am glad to meet uh, you and discuss with you. Uh, but, uh, in, uh, uh, also for those who follow us and uh, don't speak English, I suggest that you ask your question in Arabic, then you ask your question in English and I will answer you in Arabic, then I will answer you in English because a lot of people ask me to do that. Mm. If, uh, this is possible. Is it is it possible? Uh, you, you are in your room in Pal Talk, right? You have a room in Pal Talk open. Is that what's happening or what? Now, uh, no, now uh, it is uh, closed. My room. Oh, okay. Because you know, if if we wanna if we wanna say the thing twice, maybe we can do other debate just in Arabic, me and you. You know, for the same topic or anything else. Let us focus here in Arabic and English, because everybody listening now is uh, English speaking people. However, feel free to speak in Arabic if you have to, or to read something, or to quote something, no problem, and we translate. Is that all right? Okay. All right, go ahead, my friend. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, in uh, the last debate, uh, now uh, we are uh, talking about Nisiyan uh, al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. All right. I uh, said uh, for uh, me, it is uh, uh, authenticated, yani authenticated uh, hadith. Why? Because many of uh, scholars not take every hadith uh, who uh, contradict with Quran, even if this hadith was uh, was uh, in uh, Bukhari. Mm -hmm. Not this hadith uh, personally, but even uh, every hadith contradict with uh, the Quran. Mm -hmm. According to the other scholars who take every hadith in Bukhari, even it was this hadith contradict with uh, the Quran, mm -hmm. they solved the contradiction by saying uh, this verse was uh, written in the Quran and all uh, convenience uh, were uh, recite it. I mean, uh, first that the Prophet heard uh, the man uh, read it at night. Okay. And in uh, this moment, uh, when this man read uh, it uh, uh, in the night, this ayah was absent from him from uh, the Prophet Muhammad. Then the Prophet mm -hmm. وسلم, has remembered it. It is case like when we see a dream at night, then in uh, the morning we forget uh, it, but we are uh, remembering it immediately when we see this sign reminds us of it. Uh, so this uh, face was absent from him but has not uh, erased of his mind so forgetting has uh, here is uh, because his mind is uh, preoccupied with something else mm. also scholars uh, said according to prophets uh, forgetfulness after informing people is uh, possible but forgetting before informing people is impossible because when he informs people yeah put yourself and don't disturb so nobody uh, bother you and pal talk okay uh, i said uh, no but uh, forgetting uh, before informing people is impossible because mm. when he informs people they recite it immediately and it will be written 
also uh, immediately. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know when God revealed Quran to the Prophet, he was calling the writers to write it uh, right away. Mm-hmm. So it is um, uh, impossible to forget any verse of uh, the Quran. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I say briefly, uh, briefly, the scholars said that of the prophets forgetfulness is possible with two conditions. Uh, the first, first condition, he forgets after he informs people, mm-hmm. but forgetfulness before informing people don't happen by no means. The second condition, prophets forgetfulness doesn't continue, but he must remember it either from himself or from others because God said indeed it is we who send down the Quran and indeed will uh, we will be its guardian. Mm-hmm. Uh, the evidence was the man read the ayah or the verse which the prophet was forgetting it. Uh, not only the man was recited but all uh, companions uh, doing that beside all Quran was uh, written. All right. This is my answer. Yani. Okay. So, you know, uh, Sheikh Rahi, uh, as this, this is your answer. I'm glad that you corrected yourself because last time you said that this hadith is weak, but the fact it's not. And you just agreed that this is not yes. a weak hadith. Okay. This is a Sahih hadith. Uh, uh, thank you for that. Now, here what you said that this is that the forgetting happened after the prophet he gave the quran to the people obviously yes because uh, how the guy he will know about it if, if the prophet did not mention it right so obviously it happened after the prophet he mentioned the quran to others but here we have a problem is if allah he said to me and you and if allah is god he is the almighty if he say you will never forget that's mean you will never forget and it doesn't you know he didn't say you will not forget temporarily or permanently he said you will you will be re- re- giving quran and you will not forget the quran and when god he says you will not it's mean you will not it's mean the word not is not option it is a must you will not forget this is a promise of god what is confirmed in this hadith which you confront yourself that this is a true hadith that the prophet he forget he forgot verses and chapters not only a verse or two or a sentence verses and chapters and here we need to ask ourselves if god is almighty and he made a promise is this god capable of keeping his promise number two why allah did not remind muhammad instead of this guy i mean this guy is a man he himself he might forget something he might add something he might you know uh, 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 add a, a word to the verse so your prophet now is taking the Quran from this man because totally he forgot it it is the man who remind him about it which means he have no idea that he said that before when I say you remind me you know your prophet he did not say oh uh, you remind me to do something I forgot to go to the market or you remind me to go and uh, visit somebody and this is not what he said he forgot verses and words and chapters of God now here is that because Allah did not keep his promise or because Allah he promised him not to forget but Allah in purpose caused him to forget because uh, you know he want to test Muhammad in something maybe maybe he want to test Muhammad if he is a person who is a trustworthy because until now and as, as as you know you Muslims you believe that nothing happened except by the will of Allah correct it is Allah will. Yes. So if Allah will, if this has happened by the will of Allah, that's mean Allah is the one who made him forget. What is the yes. purpose? What is the purpose of Allah? And Allah did not make him forget to eat. No, he did not make make him forget to visit his uh, uh, cousin. No, he made him forget something extremely important in touch of the life of the believers and their future. Because as you know, based on the teaching of the Quran, you Muslims are saved because the Quran will guide you. So when the prophet he forgot the Quran, why Allah he made the prophet forget the Quran temporarily? What is the purpose of this forgetting? Because you believe that everything happened by the will of Allah. The mic is yours. Go ahead, my friend. 
I said, uh, my friend, I said for to me it is not uh, authentic hadith. Oh, for you it's uh, not, but the, for the scholars it is, is it? For the yes. scholars it is, okay. Uh, mm. uh, why? Because every hadith is contradict with Quran. I don't take it if they in Bukhari, but I answer you according to the scholars that uh, take every hadith uh, in Bukhari. Uh, as to me, I, it is uh, not a true hadith. Yeah, but this is, does not contradict the Quran because the Quran says that Allah will cause the Quran to be forgotten. You forgot? You see, the Quran says in different chapter, and I mentioned that to you last time, the chapter 2, verse 106, it says, uh, مِنْهَا so Allah in the Quran, he mentioned already that we will cause the Quran to be forgotten. So where is the contradiction? The contradiction is Quran contradicting Quran. <clears throat> Not the Hadith contradicting the Quran. Because the Quran confirmed that Allah will cause Quran to be forgotten. And if you remember, I asked you before about this verse. Allah will cause to be forgotten to who? You said the Prophet. No. Yes. So uh, where is the contradiction here? The contradiction is not between the hadith and the Quran. The contradiction is between the Quran and the Quran. Because uh, I, I hope you will not say the Quran is weak. Because the one verse in the Quran says, We will give you Quran and you will not recite, will not forget. And the other verse in the Quran says, We will give you Quran and you will make you forget. So which one is valid? Yes. As. Uh... Uh, the verse that said uh, we don't uh, abrogate a verse or cause it to be forgotten except that we bring forth one better than it or similar uh, to it do you not know that Allah is uh, overall uh, competent uh, another translation for whatever sign we change or uh, eliminate or cause to recede into oblivion we bring forth a better sign or one or uh, uh, a better sign when that is uh, identical do you uh, not know that God has power over all things uh, I see I said in this ayah there uh, are three famous few in abrogation. Uh, abrogation, the recitation with keeping rule. Uh, abrogation, the rule with keeping recitation. Abrogation, the rule with the recitation together. Uh, do you understand me? My friend, because, I, uh, uh, in, in case you do not know, I have a degree in, in, in Islam too. I have a bachelor degree. So I know exactly what you are talking about, but this is not our topic. Our topic is not about abrogation because the verses speak about abrogation and forgetting. So our topic is not abrogation. Leave the abrogation alone. Allah said, we will cause you to forget the Quran. We cause you to be forgotten. So our topic here about the forgetting part, not about the abrogation. So let us separate them. How Allah, he says, I will cause you to forget in one verse he is the one who is causing the forget the, 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 for, the, the to forget and the other verse saying i will give you quran and you will never forget that is the contradiction i'm not talking about the abrogation abrogation is a different story go ahead yes you see that the speech uh, in this ayah is directed to the prophet because if the speech was directed to the prophet allah must say uh, or cause you to be forget it but the first isn't is not said that but said we don't abrogate affairs or cause it to be forgotten uh, it is mean uh, in this ayah uh, it is means that God Erasing the old meaning of verses and confirming new meaning according to the evolution of the time or evolution to uh, evolution of the period, so the people will be forgetting the old meaning. Then they are 
taking the new meaning uh, that is suitable to them. This is meaning was taking from forgetfulness. Forgetfulness. Uh, Allah says, أو ننسها, or cause to be forgotten. Uh, the second meaning for uh, no abrogation, but abrogation. Uh, uh, Do you understand me? Do you know the difference between abrogation and the difference between abrogation? There is a reverse meaning between two words. This meaning was taken from the recitation that saying ما ننسخ من آية أو ننسئها ننسئها هناك ننسئها because meaning of النس النس is abrogation. So in Arabic we said may God abrogation moment of your death. This is the meaning of abrogation. You said it is not as the old opinion or the old saying. ذات نسخ التلاوة وبقاء الحكم أو نسخ الحكم وبقاء التلاوة ونسخ الحكم والتلاوة معا. I want to clear this thing. Do you do you know how this triple division came from? It came from human nature. In every mind of us, there is motivation to this triple division for example we said couple in the house or couple outside the house or one of them is in the house and the other is outside the house mm -hmm. there is no fourth possibility and as well when we say abrogation the recitation with keeping rule abrogation the rule with keeping recitation Rules abrogation with the recitation together. Then such scholars researched in the Quran and bring us one example at least for every sort. Uh, it is uh, if so. Uh, forgetfulness. Also, there is another meaning of uh, forgetfulness in this ayah. That means there is two rules for one things then muslim will take the suitable rule according to the place that he lives uh, in it or according to the time that he lives uh, in it that meaning came from uh, in arabic in arabic we said uh, it means that i copied one book from another book or I wrote one book from another book. That's not mean that uh, then the original book became conciliated, but means there is two covers ready to use according to our needs. This is uh, my opinion, and my, their uh, scholars said in this ayah. All right. Uh, nunsi, That's wonderful. You see, my friend, uh, uh, Arabic is your first language. Arabic is my first language. And there's a huge difference between nunsi and nasa'a. The, the word nasa coming from the word forgotten. This is why all your Muslim translations are saying forgotten, not to like uh, pre -pre post or uh, uh, pre like uh, repost later. This is not about something he would do later. However, if you go to book Al-Qurtubi, here you will find the problem and your prophet was trying to solve it. I don't know if you have the book of Al-Qurtubi uh, with you. You will see that the Jews, they accused your prophet that he is ordering the Muslims things he never even said. And your prophet, he, for, he, he confirmed that, that he is, yes, you know, he is ordering the Muslims. Nowhere in the Quran it says he's making rules. And uh, the, your prophet, he is, all oh, what he is saying, oh, Allah gave me rules. But he made me forget the Quran, but don't worry, he will make a Quran better than the rules, or let us say, uh, uh, he will make Quran instead of the Quran, which I, I forgot. Because the Jews, they are they are challenging him, where where is the verses you are saying 
you gave them to do this and this you did not give them anything so you are making up rules I don't know if you have a Quran the, 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 the Al Qurtubi with you if we go there it says قوله تعالى ما ننسخ من آية أو ننسها ننسها عطف عطف على ننسخ وحذفت الياء etc this is for Arabic and then he continues saying and then and then they said إن محمد يأمر أصحابه بشيء لا ثم ينهاهم عنه فما كان هذا القرآن إلا من جهته ولهذا يناقض بعض يناقض بعضه بعضا so Muhammad to solve this problem because they accuse him that the Jews they accuse him and the Arab they accuse him that uh, uh, Muhammad is bringing things he did not even receive from his God where he's bringing this and he is contradicting himself one day he says something the other day he says something else but where we can find that the Quran where, where we can find the Quran saying what he just said so Muhammad he did not confer he did not say oh you are lying it's not the case no he he agree with them he agreed with them and he said Allah he caused me to forget the Quran however Allah will bring me something better or similar he did not say oh no no you know like uh, uh, because it says here nunsiha nunsiha caused to be forgotten not we will delay it this is not the word nasa'a this is the word nunsi unless the Quran is written wrongly same time you can go right now to the book of Asbab al nuzul and I'm sure you are aware of this book very well uh, and you will see uh, more explanation about this so your prophet was coming with a statement does not even fit with his Quran and actually you Muslims one of the things about Muslims that they accept what what Muhammad said over what the Quran said as an example the Quran allowed the muta Muslim Sunni they said and you are a Muslim Sunni believe that the muta was abrogated by a hadith if I am in the time of the Prophet and I will say to him how I can accept you abrogating something Allah allow who is the one is higher the Prophet or God for sure you will say it is God who is higher so how how a prophet he can sign a paper from his office deleting abrogating what is signed by God himself that does not make sense so this is just an example about what was happening in the time of Muhammad Muhammad he says something have nothing to do with the Quran and then when they accuse him that he is making things up he said oh hold on yes the, uh, Allah did not give me Quran but don't worry Allah whatever he abrogate because I'm abrogating as I wish and whatever I did not even mention that this is abrogation because Allah caused me to forget however don't worry be happy Allah is going to give me something similar and better and that is an act of a person who is not presenting God this is somebody is fabricating things you're Mike my friend uh, it is not uh true story and it is not uh, true in uh, that you said about in Kortubi, uh, wrote in Kortubi and uh, Asbab and Mazul is uh, always came to solve a problem that uh, explainer don't or can solve it. It is not true. Yeah, well, my friend, uh, hold on. I'm giving you time. But what do you mean not true? Are you saying I did not uh, the Al-Qurtubi did not say that or you are not agreeing with him? No, Al-Qurtubi uh, says that. Okay, okay. That because I thought you are accusing uh, me of uh, lying or something. I don't know. Okay, go ahead. No, no, no. no. All right. Kurtu, yes, uh, you are uh, uh, true. You are uh, right. Yani, uh, read right. Uh, what this in uh, Kurtubi. But it is not uh, true. Because uh, Asbab al Nuzul is always came to solve uh, and a problem that uh, the Mufassirin don't solve it. Okay. Well, now to see Mananzakh min ayatin aw nunsiha. What, uh, so look what Allah said after uh, this verse. Uh, said, or do you want to ask your messenger as Musa? was asked before am turiduna an tas'alu rasulakum kama su'ila Musa min qabl after uh, this ayah why because uh, the wisdom 
of this kind of abrogation for uh, facilitation to the Muslim in order not to fall him into the uh, embarrassment as happened to Jews uh, before. Uh, so, Nunsiha, in this ayah, what meaning of Nunsiha? Make people uh, forget this ayah. Why? Because we, يعني, we can. Uh, now, I take you example. I, I take you example to clear uh, this problem. Now, uh, look at this first. The hour has come near and the moon has spilled. What uh, this means? It means when the moon is spilled by the human, how is the moon is spilled by the human? The moon is spilled by the human when the human reaching the moon by spaceship. It is like as the knife when it's spilled one watermelon into two parts and we see what in it but uh, you uh, will be noticed that the old meaning of this ayah is correct mm -hmm. according to the ancient time when the prophet muhammad said this ayah so both meaning are true in this time because the quran uh, keeps pace with the times or goes with every time uh, Quran like universe has discovered uh, don't stop until the day of uh, resurrection uh, we can likening the Quran by river you are see the river full of flowing water but it is but it uh, not the same flowing water which was flowing out a few days ago because he is uh, not so sitting down the water not to stay but always change the river always refresh itself by itself in uh, spite of this it is the same river which was from the very beginning so it, uh, it is impossible for the interpreter to explain the Quran and then uh, close the doors of interpretation this uh, uh, what I want to say All in right. this uh, ayah. All right. Well, you know, what you said to me, uh, Dr. Rohi, is very in interesting because you are saying that those, you know, we cannot close the door of interpretation, uh, but those who give interpretation, the more closer you are to the time of the prophet, the more accurate because you were not there and you don't even know the background. So, and you just said, and uh, I think everybody heard it clearly, you said that the book of Asbam and Nuzul was made to solve problems, but isn't it all the interpretation uh, in Islam is made to solve problems because you Muslims are so confused about what the Quran is saying? And this is why, uh, which means the Quran is making problems, not solving problems. When you say to me, those books are made to solve problems, that means Quran is the problem, and it is so confusing to the point we need the scholars to solve the problem but then the scholars they try to solve the problem they make the problem more horrible and now you are saying to me oh I don't agree with Al-Qurtubi but you know that Al-Qurtubi is a big name in Islam you don't agree with Ibn Kathir but Ibn Kathir is a big name in Islam you don't agree with that uh, at tabari you don't agree with etc so what we do now in this generation anything will look embarrassing will look really bad and the prophet will look bad by by that that uh, those books so what we will say either we say it is weak or we say oh you know they are wrong or we say oh we cannot close the door of interpretation so now you have to recreate a new interpretation for something you yourself you are not sure of same time you need to ask yourself and you need to give us an answer why in the world the Muslims, they will lie about this. I mean, the one who wrote the books of Asbab al Nuzul or Qurtubi or Tabari or, or Ibn Kathir, those are Muslims and they are scholars. This is not a Christian prince. This is not a guy who is an Arab Christian who said, oh, let us say, uh, make up stories. As you see here in front of me in the, in the book of As Asbab al Nuzul, it says, the idolaters, they say, don't you see, don't, don't you see that Muhammad command his companions with something and then forbid them with some 
same and command them uh, uh, to the exact opposite I mean isn't it obvious I mean why in the world you say something and then you command the opposite as an example the muta the muta it is a bad thing to practice how in the world somebody he claimed that he is following the same God of Abraham and the same God of Moses he allowed his men to go and rent women for for sex and then he changed his mind and then he make you know he make a statement but he did not give Quran because even the verse you give we, we are talking about my friend the one we are talking about uh, uh, in chapter 2 that Allah will cause Quran to be forgotten and he will give you something better or similar which mean based on the Quran you cannot abrogate the Quran except by the Quran because you are the one who just said to us none of our revelation none the word here is so clear none which mean not even one of the revelation of Allah but is going to abrogated abrogated by who by us Allah do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten but we substitute not Muhammad so the verse here confirm that all the, the belief of the Muslims that hadith can abrogate the Quran is false and that mean any behavior is coming from your prophet about the abrogation or causing to be forgotten is just to cover a problem as you said Muhammad always he and excuse me I'm not saying the word Muhammad uh, to insult you know we Christian we call Jesus Jesus we don't say peace upon him so th this is not an insult so here uh, Muhammad is a creating a verse to cover a problem which is he been accused that he is a fab he's fabricating things he did not even say it his God never told him where you get this rules from your God say something to you in the morning afternoon you say something else and you see that your prophet did not say this not true he confirmed it he said yes this is true I say something in the morning and then I change my mind after why because Allah none of what uh, uh, Allah revelation is abrogated or caused to be forgotten so he add the word forgotten to cover other problem here he is covering two things number one why he keep changing his mind number two why he's forgetting what he said because he can just say uh, none of our revelation is uh, uh, you know is uh, uh, abrogated but we give something better but here you will notice that your prophet saying none of our revelation it is abrogated or cause to be forgotten and this is not about delaying verses because you know that your God he speak Arabic very well Nunsiha have nothing to do with delaying verse this is not a Nasi and Nasi is something different about the delay so this is about something he confirmed that he forgot and this is why Muhammad he come with something new he said okay Allah he gave me the Quran in seven letters and we will talk about that you know if you if you like but the books which I am quoting for you, those are not Christian books, those are your scholars. And your scholar confirming, even though you don't agree with them, that your prophet, he changed his mind. And this is what they accuse him about. And this is why he made this verse. And here I wanna ask you, Sheikh Rohi, before I give you the mic back, how Allah will make something better? I mean, God is God. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you, if you uh, heard of my books. You know, I have many books in Amazon. Uh, imagine I'm saying, I'm my book. I'm going to take uh, uh, a book. Uh, I'm, I'm going to write better book than this. This is possible for a human being because he improved maybe his English. He improved his knowledge. He learned more. But we are talking about God. So how God is going to cause you to forget something, and then He will do something better or similar. So what the point? Better. That's mean. Allah will he will make Quran better than the Quran similar that's mean there's no point because you just said it's the same so why you are deleting and why you are for causing us to forget something you will make the same of it simply because Muhammad he cannot repeat the same statement twice so he's saying to them Allah yes I forgot the Quran but Allah will give me something better and similar it's like in Arabic you know it says okay I lost okay you know what I lost yeah yeah I lost but you know what I promise you that tomorrow we will have a better house like my house is burned my house is destroyed but I promise you tomorrow our house will be better and 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 the worst scenario is going to be similar so what kind of Quran this Quran is saying 
you supposedly it's not your prophet saying that it is God but obviously it is your prophet making up this verse saying Allah will give me something similar or better because that is against the nature of God God don't make something better than what God made already God he is perfect and when you say that God will make something better than what God he made that's mean there's a there's that this God is having an improvement in his life he have an improvement of a quality how Allah can make a better Quran than the Quran go ahead my friend thank you dear. Uh, asbab and Nazul uh, not uh, not all uh, not all Asbab and Nazul uh, is it true? It, uh, mystic of some uh, interpreter make uh, some يعني, uh, what is uh, now Nunsiha how when you say that God uh, change his mind no. It is uh, what is suitable to the time or is suitable to the place. So not our time uh, is suitable to the ancient time. Uh, so it means that God, God erasing the old meaning of verse and confirm a new meaning according to the evolution, uh, evolution, uh, evolution to the time or evolution to the period so the people will be forgetting forgetting the old meaning then they taking the new meaning that is suitable to them in their time now when you said muta and that god uh, allow muta then he forbid that no it is a big mystic you are thinking that Islam is uh, prescribed, muta, prescribed muta. While uh, much was known before Islam, before Islam there was 15 sort of uh, marriage. Example, uh, uh, it is, yeah, when Islam came, people left all those sort but remain one sort is muta then prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, forbids muta uh, muta's marriage yani, uh, look at yani al muta everything uh, when you your first, uh, you said uh, to me, your first uh, language is Arabic. You, if you return to the dictionary and read at uh, or uh, Muta, what meaning of Muta? Everything you pick up for your rest, like as uh, food, home, furniture, it is in the dictionary. So the meaning of التمتوع uh, is uh, relish not relish but it is you pick up for your rest like food uh, home furniture this is uh, what the some people don't uh, understand what the muta but all mufassirin as sunnah all uh, enter better on Sunnah forbid and not said this is uh, first talking about Muta. So, uh, not a problem in this. Um, you are done? Okay, yes. All right. My, my friend, you see, the, 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 the purpose of the Muta is there is about enjoying their body. What do you mean? Like you know, you know, you know Arabic. I know Arabic. Yes, I enjoy going to the beach. I enjoy eating food. I enjoy uh, hearing music. But this is not what the verse is about. So this is a different story. We are talking about enjoying it. It. What it? It is their private part. And you have to pay for it. For what? For enjoying their private part. And this is not a marriage, my friend, because marriage have to have have to be about making a family. This is the purpose of it. Is not making a family. And you know the story very well. You have a you are a person who have a PhD in from Azhar University. That two guys they approach your prophet and they said to him, 
well, we are here and, you know, we are like, we need women. So the prophet, he says, go. And he saw, he pointed his fingers at, at a, a bunch of women and he said, go and enjoy them. He did not go and say, go and marry them. He said, go and enjoy them. And then the two guys, they went there and they asked those girls to sleep with them in return of offering them clothing and money. So this is not, this is an exchange of service, have nothing to do with marriage. And you know that the muta is a preset date. One of the conditions, the major condition of the muta is, uh, uh, which is a sexual pleasure, that you have to say how much you will pay. You have to mention for how long. And then the other person, which is the female in this case, she she agree with you about the period and the time and the money. And when both of you reach that agreement, she is lawful for you. So if a man and a woman, they agree to sleep together for one night stand, let us say from 10 to 10, 24 hours. When the, 10 in 10, uh, the, the hour became 10 in the second day, this marriage or what you call it marriage is not exist no more. There's no need for divorce. So how we can call it marriage? This is not marriage. This is a contract of, of sexual activities, hiring women for the sake of uh, enjoying their, their body. Uh, and not only that, according to the muta rules, and you have a PhD in Islam, uh, 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 a woman who is marrying this man, she inherit nothing of him. She cannot inherit him because she is just a muta. Actually, there is many books that say that this is istijar, this is rent. It's renting women. So what do you mean to, you, when you say to me that the Arab before Islam, they used to do that? Actually, by the way, I have a book. It's just published in, in Amazon. speaking about the whole topic about, about that issue, not necessarily the muta, all the sexuality in Islam. What do you mean when you say that the Arab used to do muta and Allah allow it at that time? I mean, okay, was, was Musa allowing muta? Was Jesus allowing muta? Who is the world when Allah muta? And how Allah agree with the kuffar? Because this is this is not right, and you know that. And I am sure you will not allow any of your family to practice it. And as long as long it was okay for Allah at that time, what happened? I mean, what? Why at that time it was okay? Later it became not okay. I know you will tell me, oh, uh, the prophet he came in step by step. But this doesn't make sense because at the end of the day, adultery is no no. Is not step by step. Killing is no no. Lying is no no. There's no step by step. God don't compromise. We are talking about God Almighty. We are not talking about a guy going to the bazaar trying to get some goods in the better price. And here, when we mention that Allah He said something better, can you tell me what is better than the muta? Allah never gave muta better. Allah never, never send the verse to abrogate the muta. So how you Muslims abrogate the muta? When Allah never abrogated the muta, it was your prophet who made that verse after actually he allowed him to do muta. And this is one of the things about, about your prophet, how he allowed the muta before the verse. Because this verse came after he told those two guys, go and practice the muta. So imagine here that as you said, and I like what you said, you said Al-Qurtubi and At-Tabari and Asbab al-Nuzul, those books, they came to solve a problem. Thank you very much. Well, the Prophet is doing the same exactly. He says something and then people, they start questioning what he is doing. So right away after that, you're a Prophet, he bring a verse to solve the problem because people, they don't agree. As an example, uh, uh, you're a Prophet, he took an oath in the front of his wives not to do something the, the muslim scholars in this agreement about what it is exactly some they say it's about having sex with the mary the cop same they say about something else doesn't matter what it is he made he made an oath right away muhammad he received after he made the oath he, he received a, a solution for the problem he received a verse from his god saying why you are making an oath forbidding to yourself what is lawful to you so obviously you're a prophet he come with something always to solve a problem if you remember my friend if you remember Aisha she said and I'm sure you respect Aisha very much you Muslim Sunni you respect her Aisha when you're a prophet he said any Muslim woman she gave herself to the prophet and this is just an a, a privilege for the prophet Aisha she felt jealous and she said I see that your God he rushed into your desire Muhammad 
So the God of Muhammad, did, Muhammad, he have a desire for women to have more women. Not the verse came first and then Muhammad, he got the women. No, Muhammad, he have a desire for the women. Then the verse comes, says, okay, Muhammad, take as many women as you wish. So this is why Aisha, she said, Inni ara rabbuka yusaru ila hawaka ya Muhammad. I see that your God, he rushed into your desire, Muhammad. And she was talking about what desire? His sexual desire. So here we have a very clear evidence that even Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, she noticed that Quran is made up to the size of Muhammad. The word of God is not because it is right to do though this or not. It's because Muhammad, he have a desire. So when Muhammad have a desire to do muta, people do muta. Muhammad, he found that people are talking about him. They say, what kind of a prophet? He allowed women to rent themselves for money. Then he changed his mind. And let me ask you, my friend. What is muta? Isn't it? Isn't it a legal prostitution? Go ahead. Uh, uh, you said uh, that Sharia al Islam, law of Islam, uh, came uh, rule of Islam is came step by step. It is true, step by step. Then he said in uh, Muslim uh, about Muta, O oh, people, I had permitted you to contract temporary marriage with women but Allah has forbidden it now until the day of resurrection so uh, he who has any woman with his tape of marriage contract he should let her off and don't take back anything you have given to them as uh, a door uh, this what the Prophet said about Mut'a. Then Mut'a be, don't allow, uh, as the Prophet said, uh, as the day of resurrection. Now, Ujra, uh, meaning of Ujra in, يعني, فَأَتُوهُنَّ أُجُرَهُنَّ is uh, recompense, not fear or uh, rent or uh, wish. No. You thought that Ujra uh, it is uh, mean fair or uh, rent or uh, wage. No, it is wrong. God said in the Quran, فَبَشِّرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ Arabic people saying, أَجَرَكَ اللَّهِ يَعْنِ أَثَابَكَ Not uh, it is fair, not it is rent, not it is, uh, it is wage. Uh, so when Omar ibn al-Khattab said uh, when he uh, was uh, Khalifa al-Muslimin said all oh, people truly Prophet Muhammad alo muta wa then uh, forbid it for us uh, this is uh, about muta this was in the ancient the time before Islam and when Islam came, he forbid this, as he forbid wine and uh, other thing. He is take people step by step, because uh, people wasn't know uh, a lot about uh, God. Then he forbid it, as I read to you, all people I had read. Permit, uh, permitted to you to contract uh, temporary marriage with women but Allah has forbidden it now until the day of resurrection so he is uh, who has any woman with this type of marriage contract he should let her off and don't take back anything you have given to them this is about muta in Islam my cues all right, you see, uh, Sheikh, uh, the problem is, I don't know uh, uh, when you say to me, I speak Arabic and you speak Arabic, but look like we are speaking about different Arabic. You give me an example saying that Allah, he says that Allah will give reward, ujur, but this is a reward in the heaven that to go in heaven. We are talking about here getting the woman money. You see, 
if you if you uh, 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 like if the word jewel in the Quran when it speak about women is not about paying them money then you can give me example about Allah will give you reward and Allah will uh, reward you for the good deeds you do but this is not the case we are talking about payment money jewelries we are not talking about uh, uh, a reward of God in heaven so this is totally different story I look like he dropped Okay, we will call him back. <clears throat> He's offline. We will wait for him to come back. All right. Guys, do you see with me in the screen? He said this is not rented women. Do you see it? This is Islamic website. This is Islam.org. It says, in some work, special term is applied to women who participate in muta, musta'jara, or rented women. Do you see it? Muta is considered a kind of rental. <laughs> I will wait for him to come back, so I will call him. I hope you guys are enjoying your time. Don't forget, please, if you like to read and learn more about Islam, my new book, uh, Allah and Six, the same topic we are talking about, is already in Amazon.com. You can just go and search for Christian Prince. You do not need to type the name of the book. Search for Christian Prince books and you will find the list. I have nine books there already. And you pick up the book you like to read. I hope the Sheikh uh, Rohi, who have a PhD in Islam, he will be back with us uh, immediately. And we will continue. And as you see, I'm doing my best to be nice and friendly and correcting the Muslims about their belief. It's not my fault that if Muslims, they have no idea what they are talking about. It's not my fault that it doesn't matter how big you are. You see, this is all I say. Debating as scholars is a lot easier than debating Muslim kids. A Muslim kid, he can play games as much as he wish. Like, you know, like the, the kid yesterday, he was talking to me. You lose your voice repeating the same thing. When you speak to somebody, he have a PhD. He knew exactly what I'm talking about. You see, he did not say to me, Al-Qurtubi is lying. No, he said, yes, they say that. He did not say to me, Asbab al-Nuzul, it doesn't say that. He said, yes, they say that. But he don't agree with them. He didn't say, you remember last time he said the hadith is weak, last week, the one about the prophet will forget. Now, he said this, it is not weak. He agree, but he don't agree with it. See how he changed his position? No problem. You can change your position as much as you wish. Still, you are giving me no answer. Still, he is offline. I'm waiting for him. Please invite your friends. And I hope... We will have Sheikh Rohi back. Sheikh Rohi is a person who has a PhD from Al-Azhar University. It is the highest school in about Islam in the world. Uh, it's the top school. And as you see, Al-Azhar University give no answer. It's not a qualified. Nobody can give answer. Not because he is not uh, good um, educated, no. But because this is a religion, it's made of, uh, you know, collection. It's like a junkyard, you know, every piece is coming from somewhere. And, uh, you know, uh, you want to make a recycle. I believe in recycling, no problem. But recycle will stay recycled. Don't tell me this is coming from God. It does not come in any way, in any proof from God. I hope you will be back soon. Uh, if you are a person who speaks German or French or Dutch, uh, go and get my books from Amazon.com. And I hope people, they really enjoy uh, reading our books and they will learn a lot of, of uh, from it you see there's a there's a difference between somebody uh, study Islam and somebody he think what he what he studies I got a degree in Islam I'm not a, I'm not I don't claim to be a PhD holder but who care about the PhD my knowledge about Islam is a lot more higher than those who have a PhD PhD is not about education is about a degree and in Islamic University, you have to agree with the professor to get your PhD, which means there's no real research and there's no real study because real research will, will, will lead us to leave Islam and they will never get you the PhD because you, in order to get the PhD, you have to tell them what they said to you, what the teacher said to you. It's kind of hypocrisy. There is no degree. I have to repeat what the teacher said to me uh, uh dr rohi is back i will call him back <clears throat> uh, 
Hello? 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 Hello, yes, I, yes, I hear you. Yes, Dr. Rohi, uh, welcome back. Uh, I was going to give you the answer. I hope you will hear me uh, good now. Are we okay? Yes. All yes, right. Uh, My friend, okay. you, you were saying to me that uh, 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 ujur, the word ujur, is a reward. And you gave me an example from the Quran where Allah, he will reward you for doing the good deeds. But this is not the case here. This is about you pay money. So the word ujur here have a different meaning. You see, when I say, may the Lord bless you, this is ujur. This is reward. Bless you. Blessing from God is a reward, but this is not money. But here we are talking about a woman. She gave her body, and in return, you pay her money. The muta, which you call it marriage, is not an act of relationship, not for the purpose of money and sex. It's made for two purposes, sex and money. Nothing else. No family, no children, no divorce even. Which means you don't even divorce the women. When the time is up, she go home. Because simply, it's not a marriage. But you Muslims, you call it marriage to cover up that this is nothing but a rental contract. And this is an Islam or, or, dot org, Islamic Sunni website. They are saying, and I read for you, I quote for you what they are saying, not me. It says, in some work special term, is applied to women who pre uh, 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 participate in the, in the muta, musta'jara, or rented women. Muta is considered as a kind of rental because in general in general a man basic aim is the kind of marriage is sexual enjoyment of the women and in return of this enjoyment the women receive certain amount of money or property so this is nothing but a, you know a sex exchange money for sex same time you said that your prophet said that Allah he allow muta and I and Allah forbid muta he, you know like he, he been informed your prophet said he been informed that Allah he forbid muta until the judgment day where where the prophet he receive a verse saying Allah he forbid muta we have the verse chapter 4 verse 24 Allah saying do muta where the verse in the Quran says don't do muta you cannot find it so how, how Muhammad he claimed that he received an order from Allah to demolish the, the muta practice when he never did. And this is exactly what we were talking about in the book of Asbab al nuzul the, 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 uh, the people they were saying to, to Muhammad, uh, this man he fabricated the verses just to solve a problem. And here we go, he created a problem for himself. He said that you can do muta. People, they start talking, saying, what kind of a prophet he allowed such a thing? This is nothing but a prostitution. It is exactly prostitution. So in order to solve this problem, Muhammad, he come with a new rule, saying, okay, you know what? I forbid you to do muta from now until judgment day. But it's not Allah who said that. And the verse we spoke about before, chapter 2, in the Quran, verse 106, it says it clearly that the one who will abrogate the Quran is Allah, not Muhammad. Which mean nothing will be abrogated except by Quran. Quran should abrogate the Quran. But you Muslim Sunni, you believe that no hadith can abrogate Quran. How in the world hadith can abrogate the word of God? How a prophet can demolish the word of God, which is preserved supposedly? And this is why the chapter two, verse one hundred six, is exist to solve a problem. So Muhammad, to explain to the people why he keep changing his mind, and why sometimes he come with rules without a, without a verse. If we check out. Do the muta came before, which means as a practice by Muhammad and his followers, or after the verse received, you will see that the verse came after. So how in the world this person is practicing it without the verse, which means Allah did not tell him yet. You see, if I am practicing something, I am claiming that God told me that, then I have to provide the verses. Hey guys, I received this law. This law says we can do muta. We can go right now and rent some women for sex. But always Muhammad, he come with something and then people, they start talking about it. So he support what he say by making Quran and then everybody have to shut up because it's Allah. Allah said what I can do. If Allah said so, Allah said so, that's it. So what you said to me have nothing to do with the problem. The problem is how Muhammad apply prostitution to be part of his religion. 
How Muhammad claimed that his God said to him, you can rent women in return of money, sex for money. How then Muhammad, he can demolish what he just said, claiming it's coming from his God without receiving a verse from his God. Can you find me a verse in the Quran that says, don't do what I know more, Sheikh Ruhi, the mic is yours. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, what uh, uh, Allah? I said. I said. And uh, Allah not allowed muta, but muta was before Islam. Then Islam forbid this step by step. Mm. But why all uh, all uh, interpreter said? is not about muta this verse not about muta so give me one interpreter he said that verse about muta all interpreters said it is not about muta if this verse about muta why all interpreters said it is not about muta and uh, muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, it is uh, in what i read to you uh, I uh, had permitted you to contract uh, muta with, uh, but Allah has forbidden it. How Allah f was forbidden it in Quran? How Allah forbid it? Not in Hadith. In Quran, yeah. because Muhammad said uh, Allah has forbidden it now until the day of resurrection. Where is the verse? Is it clear? Where is the verse in the Quran? Which says muta is not allowed no more. Where? Uh, so wh where is the first in Quran that uh, allowed muta? It is not allowed. Give me one interpreter said it is uh, in Sunnah, not in Shia. No. Problem. It is uh, this uh, verse uh, allowed muta. Well, here we go. Tafsir al maqbas of Ibn Abbas. It says that this is muta, zawaj al muta, and I can give you a ton of them. I mean, uh, uh, it's really strange you are saying to me, give me one person saying that when all of them they agree that this is about muta. Actually, can you give me one that did not say this is about zawaj muta? I, I'm, I'm really uh, I'm, I'm amazed of you saying that. Here we go. This is the this is your this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan, and this is a Muslim Sunni book. This is not a Shia. And this is a chapter 24, verse number, uh, chapter 4, verse number 24. It says the following. I'm going to read for you. It says, and, and it is also said, it means that you seek with your money marrying women for agreed period of time. Zawajul muta. But the lawfulness of this practice was later abrogated. This is Sunni opening and this is not a Shia. And this is Quran. And this is the interpretation of the Quran. So it's very, very, very nice try of you, Sheikh Rohi, to say that this is not in the Quran when all the story is coming from the Quran. And you know, can you give me the scholar who you agree with, with where he said that this is the, the muta, the, the Sunni scholar who say that uh, muta is that exist in the Quran? Who is the scholar who said that to you? Where do you get this from? It's very, it's very it's, strange, uh... my friend. It's very strange. It's very strange what you just said because you Muslim Sunni agree that the muta is a practice coming from the Quran, but what you don't agree with that the Shia they practice that until now. But all of you agree about it. So how you say to me that oh the Shia, you know, we don't have this in the Quran. We don't have this in the Quran. Where do you get this from? This is in the Quran. You enjoy them by paying them wages. And if we go and see the interpretation of the Muslim Sunni, not the Shia, you will find that they agree. What do you say? If we go to Al Qurtubi as an example, if we go to Al Qurtubi, you want to show you Al Qurtubi? Let me show you Al Qurtubi in the screen. All right. Because you you, you said to me, uh, who like where is in the Quran and the, the interpreter? They never said that. I mean, this is really weird you to say that to me. You can say that to somebody who have no idea what Islam is about, not to me. This is Al Jami' Al Ahkam Al Quran Tafsir Al Qurtubi. All right, you can you can read with me in the screen, please. All right, it says the following. Let us go and read. Uh, 
you can return to book Al-Alus, he said it is not about Mut'ah. Al-Qurtubi, he said uh, a lot of opinion of uh, scholars mm. that uh, was in his uh, time. Okay, in, so, uh, so Al-Alusi, he said it is not Mut'ah. Yes, okay. yes, Al-Alusi, it is... Uh, and, uh, okay, so, so the Al-Alusi is, is better than Al-Qurtubi? He is higher as a scholar? No, not uh, we don't prefer uh, one uh, interpreter than one. Yeah, but but, but the majority, is, my friend, the majority of the Muslim Sunni, they agree, they agree with Al Qurtubi. You bring me one, I bring you ten. You know, you know what I mean? Because if you bring me one saying it is not about Al Muta, then you have to deal with the rest of them. So, and you Muslims agree that we have to go by the majority, not the minority. If the the majority of the scholar they say something, then we have to go with it. Right? So in Al Qurtubi, he gave you opinion that some they say this, some they say that. But he agree that Al Muta, and I quote for him, he says, Waqala Jumhur, the majority, Waqala Jumhur, Al Muradu Nikahul Muta Ladi Kana fi Sadr Islam, which is meant by this verse, the Muta, the if of, of the Muta, which was in the beginning of Islam. And Hunaka man, man qara'aha bi idafat ila ajri musamma. Some of them even they add verses or words to the Quran which is not ex in the, exist in the Quran today. Ila ajri musamma. Hatta inna ibn Abbas halafa. Anna ha nazalat kadalik. Even ibn Abbas, he swear that Allah, he sent the mut'a, not the way it's written right now in the Quran, he said, that it say it's came, uh, pay them their wages until ajri musamma, until it is a preset time. This is Ibn Abbas. So what we will do with Ibn Abbas, are we going to take al Lucy or Ibn Abbas? And the statement of Ibn Abbas is very accurate. When Ibn Abbas, he said, Ila ajrin musamma, that's mean until a fixed period of time. That is absolutely the muta. So you bring me a scholar, I can bring you a thousand. And let me tell you why. what's happening, Sheikh Ruhi. Today, because this is a very, very bad reputation for Islam. So what we do as Muslim, we say, oh, we don't have muta. this is Shia, you know. But you just said, everybody heard you. Your prophet said that Allah allow muta, And Allah today forbid muta. So it must be Allah who allowed the muta. Where we can find Allah allowed the muta? Shouldn't you find me first where Allah he allowed the muta, And then you can find me where Allah... Uh, so, <laughs> guys... I, 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 sometimes I try to understand the logic if I just say to you Jesus allow me and then Jesus forbid me you will ask me where Jesus allow you and where Jesus forbid you okay I am asking Mr. Ruhi as long he mentioned to us that his prophet say that Allah allow me allow the muta and Allah forbid the muta can you show me where Allah he allowed the muta and where Allah forbid the muta and the Quran? All of it is in front of you. I'm listening. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, my friend. If the majority of Muslim take al uh, Qurtubi in this uh, verse, why they forbid uh, muta? I don't agree with Al Qurtubi in this uh, verse. I don't agree. I agree with so uh, Al Qurtubi till uh, a lot of opinion about uh, interpretation. Uh, but the one of the interpretation Al Alusi Sunni he is uh, forbid muta and uh, said that's not about muta. So all Muslims, majority now of Muslims, well, no, uh, not majority, all Muslims, Sunni, don't take uh, muta, don't uh, practice muta. Uh, only Shia practice muta. Uh, yeah, and it is not a problem. This verse not uh, talk about muta. I see that. If the court be as you said, uh, said this is uh, when a few of scholars said it is about muta. I don't agree with court to be in that because uh, other uh, interpretation is forbid and said it is not about muta. 
uh, this is what uh, why, uh, what can I see in this uh, in this verse? All right, my friend. You see, you you gave me you gave me an answer saying, well, oh, uh, if if uh, if the majority of the scholars agree that this is verse about muta, how come the scholars agree not to, to forbid the muta? My friend, you just answer yourself because they agree to forbid the muta just because your prophet says so. I mean, they can can they not, not to agree? If your prophet says so, they have to agree. They are not disagreeing this agreement if it's forbidden or not. They are in agreement, all of them, all the Sunni, they're in agreement. So they are in agreement because your prophet says so, as simple as that. It's not because it's right or wrong. If the prophet, he forbid, we forbid. The prophet, he allow, we, we allow. As simple as that. But this has nothing to do with the proof. The proof is that the majority of the scholars of Islam, they say that this is the muta. And why the scholars, the majority, they say the scholar, they, they say this is the muta, because this is how it is. If we go right now and we take the interpretation of the Muslim scholars one by one, you see, I have in the front of me a long list of, of scholars. We can take one by one and you will see that all of them, they come with one conclusion that this is a verse about the muta. And as long I ask you a question, I'm waiting for you to answer it until now. You said Allah allowed the muta. Your prophet said Allah allowed the muta. And your prophet said, and now Allah forbid the muta. Can you show me how Allah allowed the muta? Where is the verse? And where Allah forbid the muta? I want to see the verse. Because if Allah is the one who told Muhammad to allow the muta, it's mean he gave him a verse. If Allah is the one who, you know, he forbid them to do muta anymore after he allowed it in the beginning, then you have to give me a verse. So can you provide me where is the reference where Muhammad he received that Allah allow him to do muta? And where is the reference where Allah now he forbid Muslims to do muta anymore? Can you? I'm listening. Yes. Uh, you said uh, that Ibn Abbas allowed uh, muta in al uh, qurtubi But Ibn Abbas said muta was in uh, the beginning of Islam. Then when Allah said, "Illa ala azwajihim aw ma malakat aymanuhum," He said, "Every uh, one except this is forbid. Is forbid. Uh, husband uh, except husband." So Ibn Abbas said, "Muta was in the beginning of Islam." Then uh, Allah forbid all uh, this. Uh, Islam not uh, came uh, not give uh, muta to people but it is before Islam and Islam when came Islam is forbid uh, this this is uh, what I can yani, said in this uh, okay my friend this is Tafsir al Lucy and I did not mention it to it right away because I was waiting for you to insist you insisted that uh, Lucy he said this is not about muta but the fact that uh, Lucy he says the opposite it's in the front of me it says in the front of me وقيل الآية في المتع وهي النكاح إلى أجل معلوم من يوم أو أكثر let us chant translate and it means said that this verse is about the muta which is to do nukah for a preset time to one day or more so you said to me Al Lucy, you don't agree that this is a Lucy says this is not muta. I told you, remember, can you give me one scholar don't agree that this is a muta? You said to me, let us read Al Lucy. The fact that Al Lucy confirm it and let us read together. Wahukiyan ibn Abbas, Sadi Allah, and who can a Yakulu be Heli be Heliha, Thumma Raja and Dalika. So it, it was said that the, uh, uh, Ibn Abbas said that. Uh, 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 it, it used to be allowed and then he changed his mind about it Raja, you know, he, he retreated from that order and then he said uh, That a man who is lost which means he lost his way uh, Sorry God said to Muhammad in the carajul on tae Kala Ali karam Allah who would you in the carajul on tae in the Rasul Allah He said I was a lamb naha and in muta. So he's telling a guy you are lost man the Prophet he forbid the muta and he continued then you know, it's, it's saying uh, uh, exactly the same as Al Qurtubi, and just to correct you about uh, uh, what uh, uh, what you said, you said Ibn Abbas said that the mut'a was in the beginning of Islam. Ibn Abbas did not say that exactly, my friend. Ibn Abbas said 
that it was in the beginning of Islam and he added that there is two words three words actually is taken off from the Quran Ibn Abbas said that me read for you in Arabic so you remember Hatta inna Ibn Abbas halafa annaha nazulat kathalik haythu qal wallahi li anzalaha Allahu kathalik what anzalaha Allahu kathalik qal ila ajalim musamma so which mean do you pay them their wages those who you do muta with them and you pay them their boy uh, muta with them the ajalim musamma until the preset time so ibn abbas claim that your quran today is a fabricated quran because today it's not what allah he said and he swear by allah saying i swear by god i swear by allah that this is how the verse came down ila ajalim musamma and now uh, lucy disagree with you and you are the one who asked me to read from Al-Lusi, but Al-Lusi agree totally with me. Let's read Al-Lusi saying, Al-Lusi said, وَمَا رَوَاهُ وَمَا رَوَاهُ التُّرْمُذِي وَالْبَيْهَقِ وَالطَّبَرَانِ عَنْهُ أَنَّهُ قَالْ إِنَّمَا كَانَتِ الْمُتْعَ فِي أَوَيْ الْإِسْلَامِ كَانَ الرَّجُلُ يُقَدِّمُ الْبَلْدَ لَيْسَ بِهَا مَعْرِفَةَ etc. So, so he, he go and sleep with the women etc. And he confirmed that this is a verse about the muta. Then he continue, he says, uh, uh, he's saying that the muta became so popular after Muhammad, he allowed it, became so popular. It says, uh, and what it says about uh, Allah, uh, Allah Messenger, he allowed the muta and Abu Bakr and Umar, they forbid from doing it. Uh, uh, that is return because of the abrogation, it was not in the abrogation language, and Umar, he for you know, he forbid. Uh, 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 people from practicing that, or let us say, to announce it, until the mut'a became so popular, mimman lam yabluguhu nahi wa anha, for those who did not hear that mut'a should be forbidden right now. So Muslim, they still practice mut'a even after Muhammad died. Why? The claim is that some of the Muslim did not hear the Prophet saying that the mut'a is forbidden. So my friend, the scholar you mentioned to me agree with me, Al Qurtubi agree with me. Al Tabari agree with me. Ibn Kathir agree with me. All your scholars agree with me. Who agree with you? Nobody. Same time, you said Mut'a was before Islam. But you said Allah, Muhammad, he said Allah allow Mut'a. Are you saying Allah allow Mut'a before Islam? He gave it to who? who? Who is the prophet for the Arab? Who is the prophet who taught the Arab you can practice Mut'a? When you say to me something, you have to give me a reason and a proof, not just a statement. I want to hear from you, Sheikh Rohi, an authentic proof that Muhammad, when he said, Allah allowed the mutahid, did not mean the Quran. And when he say, Allah forbid the muta, he mean the Quran. Where is that? We can be found. Go, oh Mike. Hello? Yes, I'm here. We are waiting for the answer. Okay. In Tafsir al Alusi, what he said, uh, he said, Hukia and Ibn Abbas, Rabbi Allah, Anhu, Anhuma, and Nahu Kana Yakul, Hill and Mutta. It is uh, told about Ibn Abbas that he said, uh, allowed Mutta. Thumma hmm. Raja and Velik. Then return in this uh, opinion. Hina qala lahu aliyun when Ali uh, said to him, "Naka rajul ta'a." Inna Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam naha an al muta. Hakaza. Ali said uh, that uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, forbid uh, muta. Walqaul bi an al aya nazalat fil muta qalat. Uh, this is in uh, Tafsir al Alusi, and uh, the saying is uh, verse about Mut'a is wrong. He used the word Galat? Well, yes, he, uh, yes, Galat. Well, Kaulu be an al Aya Nazalat fil Mut'a Galat. Hakaza be Nafsun Mas. In the same uh, statement, I will Kaulu be an al Aya Nazalat fil Mut'a Galat. What if Sir al Badi Laha be Velika, Rayru Makbul, the Anna Nazma al Qurani at Bahu. 
حيث بين سبحانه أولا المحرمات ثم قال وأحل لكم ما وراء ذلك أن تبتغوا بأموالكم محصنين غير مسافحين وفيه إشارة إلى النهي عن قصد مجرد القضاء الشهوة وصب الماء واستفراغ أوعية المني فبطلت المتعة بهذا القيد لأن مقصودة المتمتع ليس إلا ذاك دون التأهل والاستداد إلى آخره فثم قال ثم لما فرغ سبحانه من الكلام عن النكاح قال فما استمتعتم به وهو يدل على أن المراد بالاستمتاع هو الوطء والدخول بقصد الزواج لا الاستمتاع بمعنى المتعة التي يقول بها الشيعة والقراءة التي ينقلونها عمن تقدم من الصحابة شاذة هكذا قال الألوسي وهو تز Where is the verse about that you can you, because you said the prophet said Allah allow the muta. Where Muhammad he got that Allah allow the muta from? Where we allow? If this is not a verse about the muta, so where Muhammad he got the muta from? This, because you are the one who said Allah allow the muta, not the pagans, right? Aren't you yes. the one who said Allah? Uh, the prophet said Allah allow the muta. Okay, can you show me the verse on the Quran where Allah allow the muta to Muhammad? But uh, Allah didn't uh, for be uh, allowed the mut'ah. This is uh, not allowed the mut'ah, the spheres. No, no, no. I'm not talking about this verse. Do you, me, do you understand? Friend, let, me, let me explain to you. You said that the Prophet said, Allah allowed the mut'ah, and today Allah forbid the mut'ah. Okay, so who is allowed the mut'ah? Allah. Who is the one who forbid the mut'ah? Allah. Can you show me the verse where Muhammad saying that Allah allowed the mut'ah? Because if I say Allah allowed the mut'ah, I have to show a verse. Where is the verse from Allah to Muhammad says, okay, do mut'ah? As long as this is not the verse which is about mut'ah, which is most of Muslim scholars, even Ibn Abbas confirmed that the verse used to, so to have a sentence says, ila ajri musamma, until a certain period of time, which means it's confirming the mut'ah, because it's what mut'ah about, about preset timing. So, Ibn Abbas confirmed that there is word is missing from the Quran, and then and then you confirmed that the Prophet said Allah allowed the muta and Allah for, forbid the muta. Where we can find the reference of Allah allowing the muta, additional to the hadith you mentioned, can we find the verse in the Quran for Allah allowing the muta? Uh, it is. Uh... Saying from Ibn Abbas, I see it is a wrong saying. Why? Because Hadith Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam not said uh, that, but said Allah has forbidden it, not allowed. Allah has forbidden it now until the day of resurrection, but uh, not say Allah allowed. If uh, Ibn Abbas said that is wrong about Ibn Abbas. I see this. Hmm. So, uh, did your prophet allow the mut'ah? Let's make it simple. Did the prophet allow the mut'ah, yes or no? Yes, yes, okay. in uh, right. the beginning of Islam. Correct. Yes. Okay, so then let us go, go step by step. You just say that Allah did not allow the mut'ah. How the prophet allowed the mut'ah? If Allah did not allow the mut'ah, you said Allah forbid the mut'ah. And your prophet, he allowed the muta'ah. And you are saying that the allowedness of muta'ah was not according to the Quran. How in the world, your prophet, he allow such a thing? Go ahead. He, he not uh, allowed, but he uh, give bir mit for the one of uh, convenience when the, this ask him to allowed uh, the muta in the one of the war mm. so, uh, I permit I permit you to, to, to contract um, uh, temporary marriage with women uh, this is uh, what the uh, prophet said uh, to convenient All right. then uh, said Allah has forbidden it mm. So uh, uh, Allah, okay, just to, to 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 concentrate with you, the prophet you just said the prophet he allow a guy to go and rent a woman for sex, 
and then Allah forbid that all right if this is was a practice before the Prophet do Muhammad need to allow it because people obviously they used to practice it the fact we cannot find anything in the pre era of Islam people doing muta they do different kind of relationship there is prostitution yes there is you know there's exchange of wives yes there's many ways but that, that that's not muta this is prostitution simply there's nothing called muta if you go and check all the names of before Islam you will not find one of them is called muta muta is a statement created by Muhammad and his followers and now as long as you are the one who said and everybody heard you that the Prophet he gave a permission to someone to do muta and what is muta is to pay a woman for sex Muhammad he gave the permission according to what because as you said he permitted which means he can say no if, if if a man is coming to me and saying to me can I go and do and that it's me and people they are obedience or what I need to say to him no don't do that the story I mentioned to you and I can show you the reference were two guys they told the Prophet that we are here alone and we need women so in the Prophet he said go enjoy those women and give them exchange the two men right away they went to the women and they asked him to sleep with them in return of giving give them some clothes and money so you're a prophet based on what you just said to me he can say don't do that this is haram this is unlawful this is this is bad this is prostitution your prophet did not do that in, in, in that in the top of that he gave them permission to do that and you to, to make it more horrible uh, dr. Rohi you just said that your prophet is behaving according to his own mind his decision so how you Muslim says anything the Prophet he do is inspiration from God anything this is why you follow him as a Sunnah Muhammad he practiced nothing about religion but from God so was Muhammad here wrong are you willing to say to me that your Prophet was teaching an evil teaching telling women and men Muslim women and Muslim men to go and rent each other for sex get sex for money this is the teaching of your prophet in the beginning of Islam go ahead uh, my friend Muhammad not created uh, not created by Prophet Muhammad but it is was before Islam but he gave permission to this marriage uh, when one of uh, convenience ask him to uh, give permission then forbidden this then forbidden this so what I was uh, in the society of the, the in the society of uh, Islam and so, so uh, Muhammad Forbidden this. Hmm. I was just what how, I how see. He I mean, it, my friend, how, how we allow it if it is something the pagan they practice? I mean, do you should you allow it or you should go against it? I mean, how you allow something is bad. This is don't do you agree, Sheikh Rohi, with me that this is bad to practice? Do you agree with me that this is not a moral thing? Or you have no problem with it that the woman she go and she rent herself for a man so he can sleep with her. Do you agree with that? But no, you don't agree. Uh, it is bad. No, look, uh, my friend. Hmm. It, uh, and, uh, now in this uh, and, uh, debate, I said my opinion, and you said your opinion. No then problem. we must give the okay, no problem. I, I will finish this. I will finish this a hadith. I will finish this as long as you want to, uh, you, you, you said your opinion. What? That uh, Ibn Abbas said, Sorry, I don't understand. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ibn Abbas said, Qala inna ma kanat al muta fi awal islam kan al rajul yuqaddim al balda laysa laha biha ma'rifa. فيتزوج المرأة بقدر ما يرى بقدر ما يرى أو ما يرى إنه يقيم فتحفظ له متاعه وتصلح له شيئه حتى إذا نزلت الآية. Alright. So Ibn Abbas confirmed that this is a verse about the muta. The man he come to a town 
and he just hire a woman to take care of him. This is what the muta is about, to take care of him, to have sex with him, etc. Now, we, we, you know, you, you said what you said, and I said what I said, and people, they will make a judgment about that. Uh, Sheikh Rohi, I'm going to give you the mic back, and I want to tell you, if there is something you'd, you would like me to ask you about Islam, and I did okay. not ask you. If there is something you'd like me to ask you about Islam, and maybe I missed. Something you like, uh, something you are proud about as a Muslim. You like the Christians because most of the people they are listening right now. We have about four hundred people listening. They are Christians and maybe some atheists and Hindus, Buddhists. I don't know. So if there is something you, as a Muslim, you want to say to those people, maybe you can convert them to Islam. Something really solid. What is the best of Islam to make somebody convert to Islam? Uh, what uh, this? Um... We don't hear you, Sheikh Rohi. Are you there? I think uh, not about Muta. No, no, we are done with the Muta. You said they don't want to talk about the Muta. No problem. Let us go continue. So, what is something? Give, give us something you, as a Muslim, proud about, and maybe that thing will make the mind of people to convert to Islam. I have more than 400 people listening to you. How you can convince them that Islam is from God? What is the proof? Here we go. We spoke about your prophet. We spoke about things, you know, obviously there are uh, 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 tons of contradiction. And until now, you convinced nobody that Islam is coming from God. Because Muhammad, he says something in the morning, he changed his mind after noon. He gave a verse in the Quran, contradicting other verse in the Quran. Allah, he want to forget, the, uh, cause the Quran to be forgotten, and he will make something better than the Quran. God does not make better words from his word, because all the words of God is equal. So until now, you proved us to us nothing that Islam is from God. Now, I want to give you a chance. We don't want to waste this opportunity to give you a chance. How you can convince us with the best of the most powerful proof you have that Islam is from the true God, which his name is Allah, according to Muslims. Go ahead. Uh, my friend, one of the greatest uh, attributes of the Islam, of the Quran, than others uh, books that he focus uh, focus on uh, Lord of the Worlds, Lord of the Universe, or Lord of the All Beings. This idea not be clear before the Quran. People's uh, perception about God before the Quran was limited because the past religion was belong to uh, prophets folk. Folk. So we found that uh, Pharaoh, uh, as example, was astonished and said to Moses in uh, Quran, "What's the Lord of the words?" And in Torah, we are reading, "Pleased be to the Lord God of the Israel, not God of the world." And he said, "Pleased be to the Lord God of Israel." Uh, which speak uh, to David but uh, the Quran change this conception completely mm -hmm. uh, so the Quran was opened by his uh, saying in chapter 1 praise be to Allah Lord of the words then this idea can uh, uh, confuse uh, the disbelievers so they said uh, in Quran, has he made the gods only one God? Truly, this is uh, a wonderful thing. And uh, Moses also always said, God of Israel said so and so. Also, Jesus said, I am not sent by unto the lost sheep of uh, the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. But uh, contrary to this, we find Quran for the first time of my, my, mankind's history present theory says that God is Lord of all people and folks and the Prophet Muhammad said that he was sent to all humanity contrary to Moses who was sent to people of Israel contrary to Jesus he was sent to his folk uh, only 
So we find Jesus uh, when one woman came to him and she was not from people of Israel. Mm. She said to him, Sir, give me uh, from the truth that you came with it to people of Israel. He reply, replied here, it is not good that it is not good that I take children's bread and throw it to the dogs. It means that he considers the people of Israel all the children of God and considers other people like the dogs. But mm. contrary of uh, this, when some people not from mm. Arab came to the Prophet uh, Muhammad, like uh, Persian uh, Suleiman or like Greek Suhaib, when they came to Prophet Muhammad, didn't say uh, to them, uh, it is not uh, good to take children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But uh, he not separate between them and between the Arabs. Uh, Quran say, all people, we created you from a male and females and made you races and the tribes that you may uh, know one another. The best among you in the sight of God is the most righteous. Uh, righteous. Surely Allah is knowing aware. This is uh, what I say in uh, last uh, topic. All right. Well, my friend, uh, you see, when we Christians, when we speak about Islam, I don't go and mention to you interpretation of the Quran, according to me. If you notice everything I said, I say uh, Al-Tabari said, Al-Qurtubi said, Ibn Abbas said, I don't say I say. What you did now, you just said what you say, that Jesus said to the women, you are a dog. This is not what Jesus said. Jesus, he blessed her and he did a miracle for her. He did bless her. He accepted her as a believer. What Jesus was saying, that you people you know, and you say that the Jews, they say that everyone else is a dog. He is a pagan. He is like a dog. And it's very funny that you are mentioning that Islam does not say what the Jews they claim, which Jesus does not agree with them, when the Quran says that all non-Muslims are animals. They are the same as animal. Kal an'am. Actually, there's a chapter about it, huh? speaking about it, and you are saying well, how this happened when you are in your book saying anyone is not a Muslim is nothing but an animal. And not only that, your God, he taught people that anyone is not a Muslim is not only an animal, he is a najis, he is filthy, he is dirty. You will notice that Jesus he did help that woman and he made the miracle happen to her and he blessed her faith and he accepted her as a follower and as a believer. He did not say to her, get away from me, I only came to the Jews. And actually this is refute what you just said because if he only came to the Jews, then why he accepted her and why he did what she want? The Messiah, he was asking her, don't you know that the Jews say that this is what it's happened? So she said, Lord, Look how humble she is. Well, even the dogs, they take a piece of a bread from their masters. You are my master. And here you need to, to explain to me why the woman is coming to Jesus, asking him when she is from the Aramaic who don't believe in the same God. So what Jesus said to her, because of your faith, I will do what you want. And he did the miracle for her. In the same time, when the Quran claimed that anyone is not a Muslim, is an animal and anyone who is not an Arab he is not equal to the Arab and I will give you a reference as long as you are the one who mentioned that you know isn't it your prophet he said that Allah created from the from the sh shoulder of uh, Adam the, uh, the right shoulder of Adam the white and he said go to heaven wala ubali go to her to paradise and I don't care and is your prophet who said that Allah he hit Adam in his right sh left shoulder and he created the black people and he said go to hell and I don't care isn't it your prophet in the Quran he says in the day where Allah will make faces black and faces white and if we go to Ibn Kathir we will find that that verse is speaking about Allah will blacken all the faces of those who they are not Muslims and he will turn them black and Allah will make all the believers white if you go to chapter 27 verse number 82 
you will find the verse saying the following and you can open Ibn Kathir with me it says that Allah will send a beast his name is a Jassasa and a Jassasa is going to carry the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon and is going to hit the person in his face with the ring of Solomon and he will turn to be white and is going to hit the person in his face with the staff of Musa uh, of Moses and he will turn to be sorry uh, with the ring of Solomon he will be black and the staff of Musa will turn white and that he became all of him black the, the spot will spread and then the believers they sit with the disbeliever and they say oh believer oh disbeliever so my friend this is a teaching in Islam of discrimination everybody in Islam who is not a believer Allah will make him a black Jesus said go and teach and preach the whole world baptize them in the name of the Father and the, the, and the Holy the, and, the, and, the, and the Holy Spirit so Jesus did not come to the children of Israel only this is absolutely not true and the proof is the following if we go in the Quran you see I'm going to show you from the Quran if we go in the Quran we will find that the Quran using the word which is Injil how Jesus book is called Injil if he is coming to teach the Hebrew from your Quran there's one of two solutions either your prophet is copying the name from the Greek which is one of the original books of Jesus which means written in original copy in the Greek language and the funny your God did not choose any Hebrew word for the book he chose the Greek one which means Allah agree that the word which or the book of Jesus which is sent it was in a Greek language however and this is we can find in chapter 3 verse number 33 but if we go in the Quran the Quran confirmed that we never send any messenger chapter 14 verse number four we never send the messenger except in the tongue of his own people so how the book is sent in a Greek language and this is why the name is in jail but yet the Quran says we never send the messenger except in the tongue of his people and how you say to me that Muhammad was sent to all mankind and the Quran says we never send the messenger unless he speak the tongue of his own people do the Kurdish speak Arabic do the Pakistani speak Arabic do the Indian speak Arabic do the preach speak Arabic it says it clearly we never sent and this is a statement said in the time of Muhammad not before not after it was mentioned and said to Muhammad we never send the messenger except in the tongue of his people what is the purpose in the language of his own people in order to make things clear to them so they might understand so the Quran confirmed that there is no way Allah will send a messenger to a people who don't speak the language because if he do so they will not understand so how you say to me Muhammad is a messenger for all mankind when the Quran confirmed contradiction that Muhammad cannot be a messenger for all mankind because the people will not understand him you see this is why I say Islam is a collection of contradiction they try to explain our book to us when we show them what the verses in the Quran saying and the interpretation of the verse saying they deny it and they say oh I don't agree with the scholar now let me ask you Mr. Uh, Rohi the verse in front of us we never send a messenger except is Muhammad included in this verse or he is not included this is the verse speaking about Muhammad as an included person that Allah will never send any message except to a messenger he speak the language of the people and he is from the people and then we send him the message your mind uh, my friend uh, it is not true let this next debate look um, now I must uh, go on. Uh, it is late for me I will sleep little before uh, Sahur no problem. so you can make another debate to discuss uh, next another, Saturday uh, if you want if you like next Saturday every Saturday we can have you here it will be wonderful to have you Sheikh Ruhi thank you very much for coming my friend and uh, thank you, I hope people will have the, the benefit of this and by the way you see me and Sheikh Ruhi we might like speak and we are talking against each other but there's no you know uh, uh, I, I leave him with peace and I pray that may the Lord open his eyes and make him see the truth and only the truth and let us let us pray that the Lord will guide those who they are looking for the truth the truth is what we are seeking and the Messiah said I am the truth and the Quran says that Allah is the truth which means Allah trying to say he is the Messiah but there is no way because the Messiah he present the truth always and he don't ever teach that you can do something against the truth 
So I wish Mr. Uh, Rohi will come to us again, maybe this coming Saturday. Can we take a, a promise from you to be this coming Saturday, uh, Sheikh Rohi? Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank Inshallah. you very much, Sheikh Rohi. If you want to say something before you, you leave, feel free. Okay, Inshallah. Right. Good. Okay, take care.